Every double actor needs two great minds. Brian Clough was the outspoken, brash, charismatic manager, with Peter Taylor his shrewd, tactical and wise assistant. Together they conquered English football with Derby County and Nottingham Forest, and gifted Forest their two European Cups as the 1970s became the 80s. However, their partnership would come to a brutal end in 1982. Taylor left Forest with the intention of retiring from football, but quickly found himself in the Derby County hot seat. He whipped Forest player John Robertson from underneath Luff's nose, a move that drew a line under their friendship. It was coming. Several shots across the bows came at the start of the 1980s. Clough negotiated a pay rise at the city ground without consulting Taylor, whilst Taylor himself wrote a biography on Clough without the manager's knowledge. Clough would go on to label Taylor a snake, with a rebuttal from his former assistant that he regarded his manager with distaste. Sadly, the pair never spoke again, as Taylor died in 1990. The passing of his assistant saddened Clough, and he would attend his funeral. Without Taylor by his side, Clough won two League Cups with Nottingham Forest, but with him, he got Derby promoted to the top flight, won them a first division title, got them into the European Cup semi-final and gave Nottingham Forest their biggest achievements. Their only league title in 1978 followed by two European Cups and two further league titles. Clough retired in 1993 with Forest's relegation to the second tier. After Taylor left in 1982, Clough or Forest were never the same. But let's slide the doors open, gauge the effect of the butterfly and rewrite the football in history books. Here's what would have happened if... Peter Taylor remained Brian Clough's assistant and upheld their partnership. If Taylor and Clough were to continue working together, they had to be entirely working in synchronicity. The summer of 1982 saw big changes at the city ground. In came Peter Beardsley, Peter Reid and two former Ballon d'Or winners in Alan Simonson and Kevin Keegan. Forest were going to return to the European Cup, even if it bankrupted them. They would not, at least not in the first try anyway, thanks to Liverpool's unassailable points tally. Nonetheless, Forest were just six points behind. The shining beacon of hope for Clough and Taylor with that summer was the retirement of Bob Paisley, one of the most successful football managers of all time, a man who had gifted Liverpool their first three European Cups. Steve McMahon was added to the squad in 1983, as well as the invaluable contract renewals for Peter Shilton and John Robertson. And with the retainment of those two final names, two European Cup winners with Forest, the Midlands club were able to win back entry into the European Cup, pipping Liverpool to the league by just a solitary point. Despite no luck domestically in the Cup competitions, Forest went all the way in Europe. Tottenham were the opponents in the UEFA Cup semi-final, sunk by two Keegan goals at White Hart Lane in a 4-1 aggregate win, a match that was the true final in all honesty. Belgian outfit Anderlecht were beaten 2-1 on aggregate in the 1984 final, a third European triumph, but not the one that Clough or Taylor craved. Craved so much that they added the likes of Chris Waddle and Mark Chamberlain to the squad. Everton's 90 points tally that season in the first division was ridiculous to even comprehend, never mind usurp, and Forest were in second, 8 points behind the Toffees. They wouldn't be in Europe regardless next season, nobody in England would be, after the troubles of the Hazel disaster. A stadium that was outdated, but a stadium that Forest were preparing to play inside when tragedy struck. 39 Juventus lives were lost that night, on a night that was supposed to be the special for the old lady, as they won their maiden European Cup through a Michel Platini penalty. It was that ban that really drove a wedge between Clough and the board. The transfers dried up. Dennis Irwin was able to be coaxed away from Leeds in 1987, but not that many players passed through the doors. Forrest spent three years under a spell of Merseyside dominance. First Liverpool in 1986, Everton in 1987, and then Liverpool again in 88. And it was in 1988 where they would exact some revenge on Liverpool. A 2-1 win in the FA Cup semi-final over the Reds that sealed their spot in the final against underdogs Wimbledon. Loris Sanchez scored, but two goals from Chris Waddle quickly turned the game on its head. Forest were FA Cup champions. Clough had finally got the one trophy that he hadn't won. The formula was the same the following year, a win over Liverpool in the semi-final and a win this time in the final, this time over Everton. The Merseyside double. Unfortunately, this was not the story here, as 96 Liverpool supports perished in the semi-final at Hillsborough. Forest again were rocked by tragedy. Forest won their third league title a couple of weeks after. Nobody celebrated. There wasn't cause to celebrate. And a year later, after another league title, Peter Taylor died suddenly in his Mallorcan home. Clough had lost his right-hand man. In a tribute to Taylor, Forrest would pip Arsenal to the 1991 league title, but things were never really the same. Forrest would drop her out of the title race indefinitely, finishing 6th and 8th respectively before Clough's retirement in 1993. But one last throw of the dice was required in the 1991-92 season. The ban was lifted on English clubs in Europe. Forrest thrashed Bromby and Benfica and after five group games in the strange semi-final stage, Forrest led Barcelona by a point, their final match inside the cauldron that was the new Camp, Johan Cruyff's Barcelona. There was just one goal in the tie, but it didn't come in the away white of Forrest, it came from the delicious boot of Haristo Stoichkov's free kick, 
Barcelona would win their maiden European Cup in the final, at Wembley no less, against Sampdoria. It would be Forrest's final European run. They would be relegated from the Premier League in 1999, never to return. Nottingham Forest winners. Brian Clough and Peter Taylor masterminded a couple of FA Cup wins that were never realised as well as four more championships and another couple of runs in Europe. Liverpool and Arsenal losers. Both missed out on two league titles with Forest's re-ascension to the top of the tree. Is this the alternative football universe you expected from this scenario? Please feel free to suggest videos down in the comments section and I will sooner or later get round to making a video about it. I would be very grateful if you could drop a like and a comment on this video and subscribe, as it really helps the channel grow, so I can continue to deliver 7 days a week content. I'm also on Twitter at whatif_youtube.